I've worked primarily in cedar. Actually, during my Columbia University stay from 73 to 75, I worked with uh, metal, with uh, cold rolled steel that I would weld. Uh, and I have to admit that the work, though I seemed very involved in it, it just didn't go to the place that I needed it to go. And whether it was for my lack of understanding of that material, or for the fact that it was a sheet that I was working with, or for the fact that I, that I never really learned how to weld that well, I don't think it's those things. I think it was the wrong material that couldn't have the organic, sensuous look that I wanted my, my surfaces to have. Uh, there's a monk that was a very good friend of mine that bought me some 4 by 4 cedar beams at the very end of my stay at Columbia University, which is 1975. And these beams I attacked immediately and I saw also immediately that it had a whole nother look, a whole nother possibility. And I've been working with cedar ever since, Western Red Cedar. I try very hard from time to time to rip myself away from it. I don't want to feel obliged to use that material. But somehow, up to this point, it seems to be the material that has come closest to saying what I need to say through my work. And with the commission that I have from Princeton University, I needed to use this as an opportunity to really dip into another material. And the material that I chose to work with is copper, pounded copper sheets um, that uh, we will be doing for the next two and a half years, basically pounding copper. The work that I'm making now is a full-scale model of the sculpture that will be uh, made uh, out of pounded copper eventually. Uh, we are going, we have divided this sculpture into sections that are about like so. So we're screwing them to be a puzzle with little rectangles that we will be able to bring to somebody by the name of Richard Weber, who will be doing the pounding. We will be doing, in our studio, a lot of the cutting of the uh, copper sheets so as to prepare these sheets. There's a pattern that needs to be made for every four by four cedar beam that's in that sculpture. And I suspect we're going to have close to 3,000 four by fours that will be in that sculpture. So he needs to pound each one out in keeping with the pattern that he draws for us to cut. Uh, we just uh, purchased or, or renting a machine that is uh, this heavy duty copper cutter that we will then give him what he gives us in paper, in thin paper, the uh, pattern in thin paper, we will cut out on our machine. So it's an extremely labor-intensive process. So it's not just making the full-scale cedar sculpture. It'll be 19 feet high, but it's, it's assembling it in a way so that it can be accommodated uh, in the studio of uh, uh, Richard, who's doing the, the pounding of the copper. And then he's going to assemble it rectangle by rectangle by rectangle in an entirely different space, which is enormous, and stacking it so that we have, and we can look and we can see and we can revisit places on that piece to see what needs to be added or what needs to be subtracted as he goes up and then when he finishes building the entire uh, sculpture. 
So essentially, I'm taking this as an opportunity, the Princeton piece, as an opportunity to try something I've never done before.